KERC Channel 2. This is Houston Newsmakers with Cambrell Marshall. We're number one. It's something we're fond of saying about most things that have to do with this great city and region of Houston, but that is not the case when it comes to human trafficking. And experts say there's a definite link between human trafficking and sex trafficking of children. This disturbing list of some of the risk factors for sex trafficking shows that the top of the list is running away, followed by homelessness, which can easily come after running away. Then dysfunctional family environment. Those are just some of the risk factors. Joining me this morning to talk about the tricky issues facing our community because of the numbers of children who are declared runaways, Ryan Mancarius, who's the executive director of Crime Stoppers of Houston, and Jennifer Holman, who is at the forefront of community movement to increase knowledge and hopefully action against what is a big issue. Good morning to you both. Good morning. I appreciate you being here because this is something that we've been talking about in general for a long time. Let's talk about why Crime Stoppers is getting involved in this aspect. You know, human trafficking is one of those things we say and everybody says, oh yeah, it's terrible. It's terrible what happens to those um, those poor families or those poor children or those, those people that come here from other countries where they have no paperwork, no documents, or what happens in third world countries. And I say, wait a minute, let's start over. Human trafficking happens right here in Houston, Texas, where from the most affluent neighborhoods to the poorest neighborhoods, young children, boys and girls are targeted by predators every single day. Mm -hmm. It's a problem right here in our homes and in our neighborhoods. It is not a distant issue. And we really as a community need to focus on it. And Crime Stoppers has an unbelievable tool with our tip line. We can come in and help law enforcement deal with such a complex issue where people don't want to talk. They're afraid to talk. Our tip line is anonymous, there's a cash reward incentive, and it's proven to solve cases. There are a lot of good benefits in that, and so I can see how that could work. Jennifer, what's your biggest concern about how human trafficking has been evolving through the years? You know, Kimbrough, the, the, the face of this has changed, and Ron is exactly right. It has now crossed all socioeconomic and cultural boundaries. Um, it's changed because they're now recruiting not the kids that are homeless or that have just in foster care, which was used to be the, the biggest or is the biggest channel into sex trafficking. What they're now doing is targeting our schools and churches. We have a number of cases where our large mega churches, even small churches, have recruiters inside them. Our schools have recruiters inside them. And that's amazing when you talk about that. They're going to places where you normally have a sense of trust, mm -hmm. and that's where they insert themselves. And the process is very deliberate, is it not? Deliberate, and it's, it's smarter than we are at this point. Uh, they know more about how to do this than we know how to catch them. Uh, so basically what's happened, we've now identified one of the fathers of a survivor, uh, basically processed, created a process and said, this is exactly what we saw. And it looks like normal everyday life. It looks like all of a sudden your daughter or your son gets a new friend. And it's not the friends they used to hang out with mm -hmm. when they were kids. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden they get a new crowd. Mm -hmm. And then they start hanging out at different places and having different hobbies. Go ahead. So there's a lot that people need to be concerned about. And sometimes it starts with the child just running away. I've got a, a, a graphic of a young lady as of this taping of the show, 15-year-old uh, Isabella McCarble, had been missing for a week, considered a runaway. And, and, and now Crime Stoppers is now getting involved to help solve these kinds of circumstances as well. Typically, police may not believe a crime is involved in this. So it could be kind of, I don't know if to say tricky, but how do you separate the crimes from the potentially not? Crimes. You know, it's hard for me to talk about this without getting really upset and emotional because as a parent, if your child goes missing, it's the most horrific thing on earth. And for it to be labeled as a runaway and therefore not potentially a crime is something we don't want to hear. Mm -hmm. Kids that are running away, especially under 16 years of age, don't have the legal right to do so. But beyond that, we know that a lot of these kids that are quote unquote runaways have actually been very strategically um, groomed for up to a year and they are in, in fact lured away from their homes. Mm -hmm. Do they go willingly in the moment, but do they know what they're getting into? Absolutely not. And you talk about some of the steps that go into that because you, one of the things you did talk about was the, befriend, the befriending that yes. goes on in those trust areas, for example. Talk about what that, and I'm going to go down the list of things, mm. befriending, which creates trust in someone who may not be someone they should trust. Exactly. So, so basically it happens like this, Kimberly. 
sometimes you see a, a girl that has self-confidence issues. Um, but at, at a young age, did you not have self-confidence as you, Ronnie? Of we all course. go through that, right? And they can't find the right time, the right age, they key in on that. And then basically this one person, this one girl or boy, becomes uh, their best friend. Mm -hmm. Starts spending the night at your house. You get to know them. You may even go ask to, to talk to the parents. As a parent, you would go talk to the other parents. Well, those aren't really parents. And they have homes in our neighborhoods. So then, then you let your daughter spend the night over at their house because you feel like you've gotten to know them. Now what's happened is when your daughter goes there, they're taking them to clubs, they're taking them to parties that they wouldn't be, have access to beforehand. They're introducing and them to new That's things. right. Yes. So in that case, they start to isolate them so that they f they're get, kind of getting them away from their structure and they have this new group of friends and that kind of tends to desensitize them, does it not? Yeah, it's a really strategic plan. You know, we'll befriend you, we're going to start introducing things into your life that will create a wedge between you and your family. We'll then start criticizing your family for blaming you for now doing drugs or alcohol, we'll start creating a pathway for you to leave your family, we'll start re, re reprogramming how you think about your parents in your social circle, and then when we get them, when they get the chance, they'll capitalize and on And you've talked about the fact that that's sometimes the biggest. Once you get them desensitized and get them convinced to kind of step away, once they step away and they capitalize on these young people, that's you indicate that there's the chances of them being get, get, uh, retrieved gets less and less. It's less and less. The further you get down these six pro these steps, six steps, uh, the the less your chance. The probability of getting them back is even is far worse. So, what's the challenge now of Crime Stoppers? You're taking on this. Normally, you offer rewards. How do you figure out when to offer rewards and when not? We work very closely with the investigators assigned to the case. Of course, we only go public on cases when an investigator has deemed it's appropriate. And then our board of directors decides whether or not they will offer a reward. But I'm telling you, nine times out of ten, ten times out of ten, when there's foul play, we are going to get involved. We are going to put Crime Stoppers funding behind it because these kids do not have the mental capacity the emotional capacity to make the decision to leave their home. And we know that every moment that they are far from their homes, that they're in the possession of somebody else, they are probably in a horrible situation. Jennifer, how, how optimistic are you knowing that a runaway now can be attached to Crime Stoppers, which may be, get people to get these young people before they start going down this road. Let me let me give you an example. What what Crime Stoppers can help us do is, we were we're following this case within some Isabella McCarble, very um, very close to this case. Saw social social media activity is huge for these kids, right? Uh, we saw social ma media activity stop. That leads you, and then you hear different tips and, and different things that are going on. So th what this does for us is gives everybody a central place to go to, keeps the investigator um, involved in what's going on with the different tips. It just hopefully will increase the amount of tips that will come in, So because sometimes you go through a lull and it's want, a dead time. We want to make sure everyone, again, as you, you know Crime Stoppers information, we've done it a lot, but we want to put this on the screen again to let you see who you need to contact. Crime Stoppers, very easy, crimes dash stoppers.org and the number is 713 tips thank you for what you're doing thank you thank you for your advocacy on behalf of all these children we can save hopefully we can do that appreciate you being here thank you thank, thank you very much